how this applies to virtual communities and all. Well, let's start with a simpler case, which is a small town community. Right? What is the characteristics of a small town community? That everybody knows everybody else. Basically, you can, you know, when sociologists study communities, what they do is they go house to house to, to, because what they need to create is, that, is a network of acquaintances or the network of people who know each other. So they go house to house and ask the person of the house, hey, can you give me the list of your friends? And you write the list of your friends and then the sociologist makes the list of the friends of everybody and with those lists, he makes the list of the friends of your friends, right? Because now you have all the list of friends and you can tell, well, this is his friend, so you go to the other list and these are the friends of his friends, so they add them there. That way you have the person, the friends, the friends of the friends. And when they discover that the friends of your friends know the friends of my friends, who know the friends of her friends, who know the friends of his friends, that basically means that everybody knows everybody else, right? That is what makes a tightly knit community tightly knit, and that is one of the reasons many people don't like to live in tightly knit communities. Everybody knows everything about everybody else. Now, when a, when a community is that tightly knit, word of mouth travels very fast. Gossip, if you want to, travels very fast because everybody's interconnected. The friends of my friends are the friends of your friends, so, so there's always a link to, to, the, to the friendship network of another person, there's an, always a link to another person, that is what tightly knit, in a way, means. And when word of mouth travels very fast, particularly word of mouth about infractions of local norms <coughs> travel very fast. Imagine that you make a promise to one of your neighbors you know, yeah, you took care of my kids the other day that I had to go to the market. I'll take care of your kids next time that you need me. And then she comes back to you. Hey, you know, I need you to take care of my kids today. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I can't do it. You know, I, I'm sorry I made that promise. I'm not a, you break a promise. And the following day, everybody knows that you broke that promise. Or you make a bet with somebody about some football match. You know, you lose the bet and you refuse to pay the bet. The following day, everybody knows that you're a bad bettor, that you don't pay your debts. Or you ask for a favor and you don't reciprocate it. Well, the following day, everybody knows that you don't pay your favors back. Now, what happens then is that your reputation in the community begins to suffer because everybody now knows that your word is not worth, that your word, your, your, you know, your promises are not worth anything, that you don't reciprocate favors, that is that everything is, you know, everything towards me, but I'm not going to give anything to the community, that you are a bad better, that you are, you know, you, you charge people when you win, but you don't pay when you lose. And communities, even the simplest communities, have a very simple way of punishing you for, the, for viol violating a local norm. It's called ostracism and ridicule. Ostracism means that they refuse to interact with you. Right? I don't take your promises, man. I'm sorry. But I heard what you did to Mrs. Smith, and I heard what you did to the other person. You made these promises, and then you did not fulfill your promises. Or you asked for a favor. Yeah, yeah. Next time, man. You know, you never pay your favors back. Everybody in the community knows you don't pay your favors back. So they begin ostracizing you in the sense of refusing to interact with you. And if you live in a tight knit community, that is real punishment. Because many times you depend for even the way you make a living in those links. For one thing, in a tight knit community, your, your neighbor is not only your neighbor, it's also your poker partner on Saturdays, may also be the butcher, so you're also his customer at the, at the butcher store, and you may have served in jury duty several times because you end up in jury duty several times at court. You see him every, every, every Sunday at, chore, at church, so you, you are also part of the religious parish that he belongs to. And once you interact with people in so many different roles, if your reputation suffers because they, 
they, they, they begin to realize that you don't pay your best, you don't reciprocate your favors, you don't fulfill your promises, and they stop interacting with you, you might as well move out to another community. Right? And there's, of course, ridicule. People laughing behind your back. He's <laughs> really trying to ask for another favor, the fool. You know, and all, you may not even hear the words, but you can sense that they are laughing behind your back. You can sense that they are talking about you and gossiping about you in a bad way. And via ostracism and ridicule, as simple as those forms of enforcement of local norms are, people stay, people keep the local norms. In a, in a tightly knit community, it is very hard to find somebody, somebody who systematically breaks his promises, who systematically refuses to reciprocate favors, who systematically refuses to pay debts, or whatever other kind of social contract or social bond they had formed. So, let me write a little different color. When interpersonal communities are tightly knit, that is, when they uh, when everybody knows everybody else and word of mouth about local infractions travels fast, the community has the emergent property of solidarity. It's a property that's not a property of the persons, it's a property of the community as a whole. It's an emergent property. We can even break it down farther and say the community as a whole has the emergent capacity to act as, to, to store reputations, right? If word of mouth travels very fast and everybody remembers what has been said about everybody else, then my reputation is stored in the minds of all the members of the community. Even if some members migrate, my reputation is still stored in sufficient minds. Um, and the community also has the capacity to enforce that is to act as a whole, as an enforcement mechanism. So, to have the capacity to enforce local norms and to have the capacity to store reputations are emergent capacities of communities. I'm, I'm going to summarize it with a, with a phrase, solidarity, just so that we have a nice little word. And solidarity cannot be reduced to persons. Now, you might think, you, you might think, well, but don't persons have feelings of solidarity? And yes, the answer is yes. You can go to a particular community who is very solidary, in, this, in the sense that I just thought, that I just explained, has the capacity to, to store reputations, has the capacity to enforce local norms, and therefore everybody can act together <coughs> because they can count on each other as, as members of the community, of the solidarity community, you can then go ask each one of the persons, why did you do this? Why are you solidarity? Why did you reciprocate favors? And you may get different answers. Some person may say, hey, look, it just gives me a feeling of togetherness. It gives me, it gives me a good feeling inside to be able to reciprocate favors, to be part of my community. Then you ask another person, and, and, and he might say, well, you know, I don't really have any fuzzy feelings inside, but I'm a strict reciprocator. You know, I'm a cold calculator of reciprocation. If someone does me a favor, I owe him or her a favor, and I pay him back. But, I, but that's it. Once I pay him back, then I don't owe anything. Someone else may, may answer, well, you know, that's just the way I am. I'm altruistic. I was born altruistic. That's part of my personality. I'm a giving generous person, and I don't even expect reciprocation. I don't even mind when they don't reciprocate the favors. Every person may have a different motive, but that doesn't mean that this can be reduced to the motives of persons, precisely because every person can have different motives. A community of strict reciprocators can exist, but so can a community of fuzzy feeling guys, and so can a community of altruistic people, or combinations of the rest. So that means that all kinds of combinations of personal motives can end up in roughly the same degree of solidarity, as measured by the capacity of the community to store reputations and the capacity of the community to enforce local norms. So, since we can explain how 